when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Iteria and Trachonitis, and Licinius, ruler of Adeline, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The right to be seated. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I dislike painting immensely. Whether it's a house, my wife will tell you this. Whether it's a house or a room, I don't like it. Mostly because I'm impatient. And because what makes a good paint job is the preparation. Preparation is tedious and it takes forever taping everything off and drop cloths and removing things. And often it takes longer than the actual painting, yeah? But when you do it well, the final product looks great. And then you don't have to fuss around with the results, right? My football coach in high school used to say, proper preparation prevents poor performance. Sometimes he'd throw another P word in there. And this would be shouted at us as we were huffing and puffing our way through running lines or what we used to call around the world sprints where we would run the sort of the whole perimeter of our practice field to increase our conditioning. Preparation is something we do in all parts of our life, isn't it? Preparation can be as short as taking a deep breath before a speech. It could take days, like the preparation of a house for the visit of an important guest. It could be as simple as getting recipes out, turning the oven on, laying out the ingredients, mixing bowls, the measuring devices and baking pans you need for those Christmas baking sessions. It could be as complicated as having plans and supply lists drawn up for the new house down to the last electrical outlet and screw. We prepare so that when the event happens, it will hopefully go more smoothly than if we had not prepared. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. Now while in Luke this is not the cry of John the Baptist, the author does use this paraphrase of Isaiah 43 through 5 to describe what it is that John is doing in the region around the Jordan River, that boundary between wilderness and the promised land. This public announcement of baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins that John is engaged in, this proclamation is the process by which he is preparing the way for the one who is to follow, Jesus. Now, I don't know about you, but this proclamation, I've often heard it where the repentance is something that happens prior to the baptism. This probably comes from the strong tradition of believers' baptism here in the United States. But in this case, repentance With that, repentance is understood to be a confession of sin or regret for our past actions, right? Repentance is, I'm sorry, please forgive me, then you're baptized. But what if we've got it wrong? What if we've got it backwards, even? The Greek word we translate most often as repentance is metanoia. And it really means something more like a change of heart and mind. One that leads you to turn back from something. A reorientation towards something new that is evident in your actions and attitude. What if the baptism John performs 
is what brings about the metanoia, the change in heart and mind. What if this repentance is something that happens to us more than something that I do? Now this flies in the face of our common conception where repentance has become the way to earn forgiveness instead of the result of having received it. What if the preparation for Jesus is not what the crowd is doing, but what God is doing through the proclamation and baptism of John? What if the metanoia, the change of mindset that comes from this baptism that prepares the way of Jesus, is the realization that God's promises and commands are free gifts, not rewards for right behavior, that God is already working in us? And what is God working in us that could lead to this repentance, this changing of the very orientation of our lives? It's the forgiveness of sins. Now in Luke, forgiveness of sins means something more like release of sin. Which is what Jesus claims as part of his mission in the next chapter. When he sits down in the temple and he reads from Isaiah, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Release of the captives. That word is the exact same as it is translated here as for the forgiveness of sins, the release of sins. Forgiveness is not understand, understood as being about the undoing of past sin and its consequence. The truth is that hurt given cannot be undone. And dealing with consequences of our actions is what life is about. Forgiveness is what releases us from the grip of our own sin. It frees us from shackles we didn't even know that we were bound by. And it opens a way for a life lived in God's service. By proclaiming release, John fulfills his father's prophecy in Luke 1. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness, the release of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, The dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. How many of us live our lives oriented a certain way because of some sin that we have committed in the past? A sin that has so shaped us that we cannot see who who or what we would be if that sin did not exist. The Reverend Nadia Bowles Weber tells the story of her own reorientation, her own metanoia. Raised in an evangelical household, she found herself in her late teen, early adult years estranged from the church, battling addiction, self destructive habits. And these realities, along with her upbringing and what it had to say about those habits and addictions meant that she was oriented away from God. Certain that God would have nothing to do with her. And then she met Matthew, a Lutheran seminary student who had become her husband, who brought her to the Lutheran church, and particularly Pastor Ross Merkel, who she jokingly calls the vampire who turned me. For Pastor Ross taught her that grace is at the center of God and God's relationship to us. And that grace is not God creating humans as flawed beings, then coming in to save the day so God can be the hero. Grace is God saying, I love the world too much to let your sin define you and be the final word. I am the God who makes all things new. 
And through that word, Nadia was released from her own sin. And if I can coin the phrase, metanoia, reoriented in a new way of seeing, in a new life. Not something that she herself did, but by God's grace. God's preparation. God's proclamation through Pastor Ross, who prepared the way. Now in this season where preparation is key and focused on what we do, how well we decorate, buying the right gifts for people, making the right cookies, going to the right parties, where one wrong move on your part could bring the, you've ruined Christmas. What good news it is to hear and understand that our salvation, even our repentance, isn't about you and what you do. It's only about God and what God has done for you, in you. It's about the one who will send his only son to earth to live, breathe, to laugh, cry, suffer, die. To prove to us that God's love for us is so great, God will do anything to release us from the sin that is our own doing. The preparation for the Lord is about what God has done to you, in you, for you. How God has reoriented your life and released you from your sin. And what is to come? The living out of that life happens in that reoriented reality. But that's next week, sir. As we sing our hymn of the day, I invite you to consider the ways in which God has metanoiaed you. How God has reoriented your life, pointed you in another direction. What sin God has released you from the grips of. And if there are things that you still struggle with, the direction you're going, the binding of sin, sing this hymn as a prayer. Asking God to prepare you for the coming of our newborn King, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.